Welcome to BitBoy Crypto. My name is Ben. Today, we're going to be talking about this Tucker Carlson interview with uh, the governor of South Dakota. Now, this is a fascinating interview because I think it shows the master plan that a lot of people in the government have for CBDCs. They're going to try to sneak it in. We're not going to let them. So, guys, let's go ahead and check out this uh, interview. I'm going to react to it and let you guys know what I think. So the drama in the banking sector that collapsed... That's Gary Gensler. <laughs> ...Silicon Valley Bank has a lot of Americans concerned about how to protect their money. And, of course, politicians are using that concern to their advantage, as always. Several states are now trying to centralize currency with these so-called central bank digital currencies. Now, just so you guys know, there's a big fight right now in the government, whether we want, or not we, but whether they want uh, the CBDC to be controlled at the federal level or at the state level. So you look at a lot of these moves that are being made at the state level, obviously they're going to fit, um, you know, on that side of the argument. By the way, not currency at all. It's software. But they're going to do it for your own good. Obviously, this is a tool of total social control. If they control your money, if they can zero out your bank account, with a keystroke, then you have no autonomy. They control you. And, of course, we know the Great Reset folks. You know, you will own nothing and you will be happy. Um, there was one article where it talked about a girl who was living her life in, uh, you know, in the year 2040. And she, did, she realized that she didn't even ever want privacy. Like, you know what? Privacy was really overrated. I really enjoy when I go to the bathroom and everybody can watch. It's kind of weird. It's a weird flex. But, uh, you know, that's what Tucker's talking about here is... We want to separate uh, the CBDC away from control because uh, if you're not able to spend your own money, what well, he says, you don't have autonomy. Well, in the state of South Dakota, legislators just passed a bill that would have changed the definition of money to exclude cryptocurrency, and that would put the state on a path to centralized digital currency. South Dakota's governor, Kristi Noem, the only governor we're aware of who's paying attention to this, vetoed that bill. She joins us tonight to explain why. Governor, thank you very much for doing this first and for coming on. Um, why did you do it? You're obviously under pressure not to veto it, but you did. Why did you? <laughs> you like that uh, gigantic veto branding uh, brander that they have there? It's pretty funny. Well, Tucker, it was the right thing to do. I became aware of this bill. It wasn't introduced until almost halfway through our legislative session. We Listen to the tactic. Through this bill that was over 110 pages long. It was sold as an update to the guidelines of the Universal Commercial Code, backed by all of our financial institutions, our banks. As we started reading through it, we saw the section of the bill that changed the definition of currency. And essentially what it did was pave the way for a government-led uh, CBDC, and it also banned any other form of cryptocurrency or Bitcoin or digital currency that existed. So for me, it very clearly was a threat to our freedom. Uh, in South Dakota, we are the session that completes its uh, business earliest in the year. We are the first ones to really look at this bill and find out the truth of what's in it. Uh, and I did veto that bill. I'm asking my legislators to change their minds, uh, to make the right decision and help me kill this bill once and for all. But I'm telling you, Tucker, we've got the same language coming to over 20 other states. I believe it's to pay. I think that uh, well, what she said is very powerful. She said, first of all, the banks were backing this, and she didn't even know this was coming out. Um, she, in South Dakota, one of the first states to be able to take a look at this, but she says there's 20 other states that have this in process. Um, <clears throat> and I think that, uh, you know, good for her for standing up and shutting this down, but there's a much bigger fight that's going to occur here. And you've got to think, right, like the last time they wanted to do a stable coin bill in the government, what happened? Terra Luna collapsed. And out of that, they got, uh, you know, a gift. Now, they weren't able to actually get it through because of Sam um, and some other regulatory things that were happening um, last year. But they're getting ready to introduce another stablecoin bill, right as all this is going on. And I think what you'll see with the unpegging of, uh, or the de-pegging of USDC over the last couple of days, of course, it is almost back to, to full peg now, is that there is a stablecoin war brewing and the United States wants to win that stable coin, stable coin war. The government wants to win a CBDC. That's what they want um, from that. So, um, you know, we've got to pay attention at all costs to what's going on right now because she just said they were going to try to ban all crypto. Unbelievable. ...away for the federal government 
to control our currency and thus control people. It should be alarming to everyone and it's being sold as a UCC guidelines update. Uh, there's no rush to do this. Uh, we need to be smart and make sure that we're doing what we can to protect people. I find it ironic that we also are having this discussion at the same time we have banks and credit cards coding gun and ammunition uh, in a separate code so they can track it. So not only can they tie these two issues together, if the government doesn't approve of what you're purchasing, if they have the only form of digital currency out there and that is endorsed and utilized in the country, they can control how you spend that money and thus take away all your freedom. So nicely put, and I, and I, I don't think you're overstating at all the significance of this. Really quickly, do you think, and you wanna give everyone the benefit of the doubt on their motives, but do you think that legislators in your state understand what this bill was actually designed to do? I don't know if they read it. Tucker, that's what is alarming to me is it was over 110 pages long and they were told by lobbyists that they had listened to for the last 20 years that it's fine. It's just a regulation update. This is what we do is adopt federal regulations. But if you start reading it, uh, you see in there, there is a redefinition of currency that it says government CBDCs are okay if they're run by the government, uh, but any other form is then banned. Unbelievable tactic. <laughs> they played the long game. They had these lobbyists for 20 years build these relationships with people. So the banks could come in and get these lobbyists to put this thing over the finish line. And it didn't happen. But well, you see what they tried to do here. Uh, they tried to okie doke them, uh, for sure. Uh, it is clearly a change for how people's assets are utilized. It clearly limits the freedom of people to use other forms of currency that they may choose to if it is a digital currency. And it is clearly putting power into the hands of government. If anything, we should have learned the last several years is the government can't be trusted. Uh, you know, Bill Tucker, what I was surprised by was that, you know, the bills that have made it to my desk this year, people think about South Dakota being conservative and being a very Republican state. The first bill I had to veto was a tax increase. Now this has made it to my desk. Uh, we've got other challenges as well. I, I really hope that what you've done inspires other governors. Appreciate your coming on tonight. Governor Christy Noem of South Dakota, thank you. So I think ultimately, it's hard to really know what's going to happen with stable coins and CBDCs if we don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow in our country with banks. And I think what everyone is seeing now is that the financial system, the, the financial infrastructure of not just our country, but any centralized power, they always run their course. And right now we are butting up against several factors um, you know, that could lead to the demise of the system. Uh, we're looking at the, you know, end or the beginning of CBDCs. Uh, we are looking at, um, you know, uh, digital currency, try, tr basically trying to adopt a uh, new technology or wanting to stick with the old technology. Um, you know, not changing, not innovating. It's not just on a capitalist level. It's on a governmental level, too. If our government is going to you know, not want to get with the times, then other countries are going to pass us by. We have the fiat system, the money printer, the quantitative easing, the, the rate hikes, the controlling of the entire economy by the Fed. All of these things are playing a role, and they're all kind of like hitting right now. We've got the debt ceiling, you know, the most debt we've ever had, consumer debt, uh, credit card debt, out of control. So, guys, things are not going good with our system. It's not a temporary phase that we're in, which you have to understand. We're in the last throes of the fight uh, to save our financial uh, you know, system, or do we let it go and we let Bitcoin or other some other type of crypto uh, take over? What do you guys think? Drop your comments down below. Uh, can you believe the audacity of these people to try to push this bill through without anybody paying attention? That's politics for you. That's all I got. Be blessed. Good boy out.